Oh, man. This is exciting for me, personally. Um, we have a very special guest today on the show. This is someone who, back during my Orlando days, guys, I when, I, uh, when Disney cut back my hours, I listened to MLB radio a ton, and this gentleman was right over here, Mr. Lee Hacksaw Hamilton, uh, yeah. was one of the voices of that station back then. So, really cool. This is where I used to get my baseball news. Yeah. Um, back before every team had nine personalized blogs and 400 podcasts, you had right. to listen to the mainstream radios. And this is one of the main guys. So I'm, I'm super excited. Uh, Lee, how are things on the West Coast? Gentlemen, good evening. Nice to be with you. Glad we could hook this up. Technology is great, unless you don't know how to use technology, but I'm glad we could do this. <laughs> Absolutely. No, yeah. as Thank am you. I, man. This is super cool. And by the way, Brian, I promise you, I did not bring Lee on just to mess with you because uh, mm -hmm. Brian's a Jets fan, and I know that Lee <laughs> is very closely associated with the Chargers who just – Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was wondering if we could talk about that after Phil's got some questions. So get into that a little bit. Um, no, we can we can do. I mean, it's it's free for it, man. If it, Lee, if you want to rip on Brian and and rub it in, feel free. It, it, J E T S I mean, Jets 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 junk. Thank you. <laughs> I've never heard that. Nice, one nice I never heard that either. That's, oh, awesome. that's awesome. Uh, I've done yeah. sports talk radio for a long time, and yes. I did three years at Sirius XM in its early stages with uh, mm -hmm. the Home Plate Channel. A uh, long time friendship, working relationship with Mad Dog Chris Russo. And that's yeah. that's how it started. So I've been out here on the West Coast a long time. I did sports talk radio for 28 years at two of the biggest stations in the nation uh, and was the voice of the Chargers and the Seattle Seahawks. And uh, as as our industry has changed, as you guys know, here's, here's the brown envelope, sign your name, clean out your desk. As yep. the industry has changed, uh, I gravitated <laughs> towards TV, and I've been doing TV sports anchor work in San Diego. And then I started my, a podcast, which has just exploded. And now I'm doing Instagrams, and I have a huge website that's all written. And in lieu of you paying me $100,000 to do this interview tonight, I'll just instead, <laughs> instead of taking your money, I'll just promote the fact if you like sports on the East Coast, I'm an East Coast guy. I grew up on Long Island. I'm from New York, even okay. though I'm on the yeah. West Coast. Check my yeah. website. It's all written. You'll really like it. I think it's LeeHacksawHamilton.com. I write on it every day. And then there's a link to my podcast. I do an hour podcast on Mondays and Thursdays and then Instagram stuff, etc. So that's my background in lieu of the $100,000 retainer. Now let's talk sports. You guys can just pick topics and we'll go for 15 yeah. or 20 minutes. Uh, and by the great, way, definitely great check name them out. Great like, by the way. Is, yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah, well, listen, it's, it's, listen. It's, it's really good. My, there you go. my hoodie's better than your hoodie. I'm from North, <laughs> Northport out on the island. I like it. I like I it. I love it. So our, um, there we go. So let's see. So you're on the West Coast now. Let's talk a little bit of West Coast sports. Um, now, in between the time that I emailed you to try to get you on the show and now, there's been a lot of um, – you would call it the coaches carousel in baseball. I don't know if it would be like – managerial musical chairs or I don't know what the term would be officially but the Mets obviously hired a manager a couple other teams have but the Padres who you cover um as of an hour ago I was hearing different names but no one's been hired yet we've heard uh Phil Nevin we've heard a couple other uh, outside names possibly an internal promotion uh what what's the uh what are you hearing out there Lee for the for the Padres who who's well, going to be the man with the, be the bench Phil, there's, there's about four names out there, but that can mm -hmm. constantly change because A.J. Prello, the general manager, constantly changes the way he's doing his business. Uh, I, I think a guy that's moved to the forefront is David Ross, who just got tossed by the Chicago Cubs in kind of a surprise move. Mm -hmm. They need a leader. They need an intelligent guy. They need a younger guy to <coughs> excuse me, identify with the players. So I, I think Dave Ross has not been interviewed yet, but I know he's been discussed in the inner sanctum at Petco Park. Uh, in the organization, they got Mike Schilt, who had three good years in St. Louis before he was bounced out of there because he feuded with the analytical people and John Mazziliak. They did interview Phil Nevin. I'm not sure if that was the ma for a manager's job or maybe the bench coach job on a new baseball staff. Uh, AJ Prello, the general manager, is really unorthodox as to the way he conducts his business. Now, so he's got he's got a managerial situation, uh, you know, and he he's about to hire his fifth manager since he took over nine years ago. There's not been a lot of stability here, mm. uh, but he's got that the left hand. He's got a manager and a coaching staff he has to solve. The right hand, he 
he's got a roster full of problems and he's still at the general manager's meetings in Scottsdale through tomorrow in Arizona. And he's got to deal with a, a Juan Soto situation. He's got to deal with the loss of his top starting pitcher, his potential loss of a stop reliever. Uh, there, They have at least five pitching vacancies now on the staff because of free agents, guys that are exiting and guys that did not pick up the options on and the whole team underachieved during the course of the season. So it, it was a miserable end to a season that came with high expectations. And then the, the falling out with Bob Melvin and the decision to let him go uh, to the San Francisco Giants. But there may be some more names that have surfaced. And as I've said, Preller just marches to the beat of a different gun. He never never sleeps. I've never seen a, a guy operate. You know, you text at 3 o'clock in the morning or – I was at the winter baseball meetings his first mm-hmm. year. He was making trades at 2 a.m. and calling press conferences at 3 a.m. in the hotel lobby. Wow. It was the most phenomenal thing I've ever experienced. That, that's a night owl. That's my kind of guy right yeah. there. So I do want to piggyback and, and, and off you know of one thing. Oh, sorry. You know what? He's a New York guy. I don't know if a lot of fans know that. You guys know he's from Huntington Station out on the oh. island. So no, he's how about of, that? He's one of you well, guys. That, that would yeah. make sense that, that he's <laughs> – uh, up late and trying to get stuff done and constantly jittery and yeah. whatnot. So That's I want to piggyback do. one thing you just said, Lee, which was that the Padres have been underachievers for the last several years in spite of having, in my opinion, they've got like a lineup of generational talent. Like they really do. you got, you know, Machado and Dati Soto, all these guys, these big bats, these big names. So as far as a managerial vacancy goes, um, do you see them kind of bringing in somebody a little more tougher, a little more disciplined to try to harness that talent? Or is it going to be something more along the lines of something else you just said, which was uh, somebody a little more analytically driven or a, a mixture of the two? What are well, you, what's your thoughts gone, on that? They've gone through a whole myriad of managers. When AJ came here in 2014, he inherited Bud Black, who's got a pretty good reputation, and he fired him. And then he hired Andy Green, who had no managerial experience and ever gave him a couple of three years. And then he removed him. And then he hired Jace Tingler, who had zero experience, but had worked in the organization. Two years into that, gone. Uh, And then he hired Bob Melvin. And I thought he hit a home run with Bob Melvin because Melvin had done so many good things in so many sets of circumstances, be it what he accomplished in Texas, what he did Mm -hmm. with no money and and young players in Oakland, it's just what he did up in Seattle. And yeah. manager of the year three times, I thought, this is a home run hire. And it just didn't work out. And I, I think my my rationale is the landscape of baseball has drastically changed. And the players are running clubhouses now, not managers. Mm. Oh, yeah. And there were big issues here with A.J. Preller and his analytics interfering with Bob Melvin on anything and everything, from lineups to bullpens to who pinch hits, et cetera. And he became robo-manager. And that's not the way Melvin wanted to do business. Now, to Melvin's credit, he didn't blow his lid. Now, I'm sure there were some pretty stormy meetings during the mm-hmm. course of the season. So they got to the end of the season, and the story started to leak out. And I don't know if you guys are aware, there were there were two big stories that happened the last week of the baseball season out here in San Diego. 32 mm-hmm. people, players, former players, staff members, ex-staff members, and executives, that the Athletic and the Union Tribune newspapers uh, contacted to try to get anonymous reaction to what the hell happened in San Diego. Mm. 32 32 people criticized Preller and his analytics department for interfering and criticized the players for not being consummate teammates. You know, that's um, something that we go through here in New York as well, because there's, yeah. there's been a lot of talk of Aaron Boone, of course, of course the Yankees manager, um, people saying, oh, yeah, he doesn't actually manage games. It's the guys upstairs who are just kind of t- – who are actually running the games. And so right. it sounds like there's a similar kind of thing going on in San Diego. Is that – am I off base saying that or – No, I, really? think, I think that was the rationale as to why Melvin said, I'm done. And he walked away from a $4 million contract to go to a San Francisco team that's got no players. Yeah. Uh, and is facing a massive overhaul <laughs> – of their yeah. roster. So it was it was really a tough finish and nobody expected this. And then collectively, I've been in that clubhouse. Those players act like independent contractors. There is there is no Philadelphia esprit de corps. You look at the Phillies and how they played, look at what the Rangers became. I never saw any of that in the Padres clubhouse, nor on the field. And you know, in Preller's nine years here, this is the most mind-boggling thing. His ownership has given him a blank check and he's outspent it. 
He has signed so many players, so many draft picks, so many international free agents. He's overpaid on virtually everybody. And at the end of the day, they haven't won bleep. In nine years, they've had, they've had three yeah. months of good baseball. A year ago this fall, they had to push to the playoffs and they beat the Dodgers. That's Which all they've done in nine years. And he's still yeah. got the job. So it's a strange set of circumstances. I think, I think he's on the clock. I think he's got one year left. And the other problem is they're going to cut payroll. They're going to go from 253 down to 200 this year. They I wanted to ask about that. They had a majority to... owner who's got health issues. I think yeah. that's a piece of this equation. So what was Padre baseball right now is not going to be Padre baseball next season. And he's got to deal with Soto and he's got to deal with Scott Boris. Like I said, right. I, so, I was just about that. Yeah. <laughs> so let me ask you a question because I, I follow obviously baseball um, – Pretty closely. This map behind me is the the uh, stadiums I've visited so far. I'm, I'm over half at this point. And San Diego, by the way, beautiful park. So, but here's the thing: the Padres, for the people who don't know this, they were the number three team in attendance last year, behind the Dodgers and the Yankees. So my mm -hmm. question is: How come they can't afford more of these players? They have a packed stadium every night. Just about TV, TV deals, is it? Is it yeah. yeah. Is it local TV broadcasting rights? Is I mean, yeah. what's the what's the hang up here? Why why are the Padres who were doing all this spending all of a sudden kind of hitting the brakes when they do have very very good attendance numbers? Yeah. What's the marketplace population of uh, New York? Huge. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Marketplace population Los Angeles monsters. San right. Diego. San Diego is this big. Three point yeah. two million. That's it. They don't draw from Mexico. They're not drawn north of Camp Pendleton because that's Dodger and Angel territory. They don't mm -hmm. draw very much in the Inland Empire. So this that's the marketplace. Now, mm -hmm. they've raised their ticket prices, guys, 38% in three years. Oh, I didn't and know that. Wow. So there was such excitement this past year that they signed all these free agents, these mega multi-year contract extensions. They made the trade for Soto. We've got you, Darvish. We developed Joe Musgrove. We got the closer of the year in Josh yep. Hader. And then Blake yep. Snell had a, a Cy Young Award type season. They yep. thought, okay, everybody was all in. That's that's how they sold out 61 games at yeah. Petco yeah. Park. But the big issue is then they underachieved. The big issue is now yep. they've, a, they've asked the fans for another price hike for a third straight year. And mm. they, they grossly overspent. I mean, their payroll was 253. Mm -hmm. With when you add in benefits, their total tax number is 296 million. They owe baseball about 30 million uh, in December oh, for going, wow. over the, going over the luxury tax for the third year in a row. And there's all kinds mm -hmm. of penalties when you're over the luxury tax. Just ask Steinbrenner at Yankee yeah. Stadium, which is oh yes, which we know <laughs> why they, they got under the tax, why the Dodgers got under the tax. Yep. Uh, so it, it's just a different market, and they. They've, I think they've stretched the market dollar as far as they can go. Now they're going to reel the, the payroll back in. The worst thing that Preller's done uh, is that he gave mega contracts with long terms. Nobody yeah. that I know of, with the exception of maybe, maybe Aaron Judge and Garrett Cole's contract, nobody mm -hmm. that I know is given anybody contracts of 10, 11, 12, and 14 years. A.J. Preller did that. Now, yeah. now he's boxed in with players are going to be 30 years old and plus, and he can't trade the contracts because of the term, the length of the contracts. Uh, he's just, he's put them in a really bad corner. And now, you know, he knew when he traded for Juan Soto and he traded six for one, he traded half the farm system to get him. He knew he was trading for Juan Soto, but he also knew he was trading for Scott Boros. And we know how that all works out. Boros yeah. always, always takes his guys. I want to talk about that. I want to talk about Soto. So, there's, there are just so many complex problems in San Diego. We're not the only one. Up the road here, we got an Angel franchise that is just functional squared. It's unbelievable. And then beyond that, you got the Dodgers who yeah. have saved their money, and most everybody thinks they're going to be the team that's going to get Otani, but the Dodgers have to go get pitching, and their payroll is going to rocket into the 250s with Otani when they get them. Now, how are you going to go get more pitching? Because the Dodgers right now have such an injury situation with their staff and, this, the, in essence, the suspension of Julio Rios, who's gone, uh, the right. left-handed pitcher that was like 21-4 and four a year ago. So yeah. the Dodgers yeah. got a lot of young young arms, but they're not ready for the major league. So 
I'm covering a lot of baseball here. On no, no, no. I, I, I love There's this. so much going on here. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. No. And this, and this is a, you know, kind of an, an odd, you know, already 48 or 72 hours in after the um, exclusive exclusivity deadline expired. Lot, lots happened, certainly. Now, Otani, as far as he goes, I personally think he's going to the Giants, but that's a whole other conversation um, about that. But we, you did mention Juan Soto, and I know we only have you for a couple more minutes, so I do want to talk about this for sure. Um, now, a, a lot of the the rumor mill has him going to, obviously, a bigger market team. The Yankees and the Mets are obviously always attached to every single rumor, right. every single offseason, obviously. Um, mm-hmm. I, I'm not sure this is going to be as easy of a trade as people think it's going to be because of something you mentioned, which was the Boris situation. Um, because right now he's got a year left in his contract, if I'm not mistaken. You have to trade for and give up a bunch of farm pieces and then also – uh, pending an extension. And so you have to do t- kind of two fronts at once if you're trading for Juan Soto, which is, is you know, not the easiest thing in the world. So I'm not 100% confident he's going to get traded. Um, uh, unless Boris was bluffing when he said San Diego intends on keeping him. Uh, do you have any th- general thoughts on that? Mm-hmm. On if you think well, it was a bluff on, or what the... Yeah, on, on our screen here, there's four boxes. <laughs> you mm-hmm. and your two partners and me. Right. Yeah, that's, that's about the number of potential markets that could make a deal for Soto. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. a, a, you're going to have to trade a plethora of young prospects and maybe one or two established major leaguers to get Soto. Mm-hmm. But B, you got to be in the marketplace, whether it's Yankee Stadium, Fenway Park, mm-hmm. maybe Dodger Stadium, maybe San Francisco. You got to be in the marketplace that can afford the kind of contract that it's going to be, which is 30 million to begin with to escalate into 40 million and maybe some opt-out clauses along the way. So just like there's just four boxes here on this Mm -hmm. podcast, there's probably only legitimately four or five teams that could take them on. Uh, Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean that A.J. Preller doesn't move them. Preller's statement at the the general manager's meetings was, I will make an offer. I want to sign him. If we can't sign him, we will then move to the next box, which means we will take trade offers. Now, Mm -hmm. My my theory is you're charging these fans unbelievable amounts of money in a small market to go see Padre baseball. I would keep the guy. I'd see if he could drive you into the pennant race next year. You know, to mm-hmm. go with Machado and to go with Bogarts and and yeah. and, and Fernando Tatis and and uh, Hassan Kim. If if he can drive you into the playoffs, then you keep him for one more season. Now, if you're faltering next year, you could still flip him. Maybe you won't get mm-hmm. as much. You could still flip him. And you say goodbye to him, and therefore, you've had three rentals with him. They they traded for him three years ago with the idea he put him in three pennant races. He and his teammates have not yet really delivered on that. But there's just a limitation as to who's going to be interested and who can afford Soto. Nobody's going to trade him on one year rental. If the Yankees go get him or the Mets go get him, it will be because they're going to sign him. And again, that's big market, mm-hmm. big apple, so they can afford to sign him. If that makes sense. No, it makes it makes perfect sense. Absolutely. Um, and so, but, and by the way, just one other quick quick aside here. I do think the Yankees are actually a fairly natural trade partner with the Padres right now because you mentioned the scarcity of um, p- pitching. The Yankees actually do have uh, several young pitchers, so like yeah. I can see two starters uh, going back to the Padres, obviously with other pieces as well. If that deal does get done, I mean, there's King, there's Schmidt. There's a guy, Drew Thorpe, in the uh, minors as well. These are all guys who, if the Padres really just need warm bodies and got to shed that payroll, could be uh, potential targets for the Padres. Um, well, I mean, I, obviously, well, unless you're putting Glaber Torres in that deal. Oh, oh so you, you think Torres is, is part of it as well? I think he has to be because they need established yeah. guys yeah. coming back. They, yeah. they don't need some triple A guy at Scranton Wilkesbury. They, they need a couple of established guys and then a load of prospects to make it happen. They traded six players to get him out of Washington. Yeah. So Right. So yeah. I mean, the price would be obviously cool. a little lower now because he's only got a year left. But, no, I think you're right. I think it would be Torres probably with two starters and then possibly another couple of lottery ticket prospects yeah. on top of that. Um, I would, I would and, do and then, that deal. And then yeah. also on top of that as well, um, <laughs> would there do you see there being potentially a salary dump involved as well? Like uh, the Padres trying to package in like a Cronenworth or somebody else like that just to, to you know make the receiving team eat more money. Do you think it would be that kind think, of trade or no? No, I don't think the receiving teams want to take on guys with $10 million contracts hitting 230. 
Yeah. And Jake, as much as I like Jake, Jake's yeah. had two two down cycle offensive seasons, and I yeah. like him. But I, I think that Major League scouting reports have figured out where the holes in his game are, and he, as good as he is defensively, you know, ten million dollars on a, I think they gave him an eight year contract. There's another one of AJ's. Why'd you do that deal? Uh, mm-hmm. They gave him a, an extended contract, so that's that's where it is. I don't think anybody wants Cronenworth at that price, and you know, the, again. It's hard for me to put in place what the pecking order is. Is it is it get a decision made on Soto first, or is it go in the marketplace and go get pitching because they need at least two starters. They have they have one starter in Darvish coming off elbow surgery. The second starter, Joe Musgrove, missed a third of the season with shoulder capsule surgery. Mm-hmm. They, Blake Snell is gone. Uh, I hear yeah. it's St. Louis, possibly or San Francisco. Uh, oh, wow. But again, that's a Boris client, so who knows where that where that's going to end. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah you know, no, exactly. The th- those are the top, those, <coughs> excuse me, top three starters. The, <laughs> the next three starters all opted out of their contracts. They're all free agents and they want 16 million apiece. And I just don't think Padres can afford with the budget cut coming to pay starters four, five, and six, 16 million apiece. And Josh Hader's vacated the premises too. So mm. what was a, a an exciting time in baseball, it's become a very uncertain time in San Diego baseball right now, just because of the roster makeup. But like I say, out here on right. the West Coast, we're dealing with fiasco in Anaheim, and then obviously waiting to see when the Dodgers drop anchor and start writing checks, who they're going to get. Because the one thing yeah. I'll say about this, the Dodger way, it's pretty impressive. They got credentials, whereas a bunch of these other teams really don't. Mm. Yeah. That's it. All right. Yeah. So, guys, um, I don't want to keep you all nightly. I could talk hours about all these things. But um, any last yeah. questions for, for Mr. Hacksaw over here? Yeah, come on, Jet fans. Stand yeah, up and I, sound I, off. I heard you screaming <laughs> last weekend. Well, I, 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 yeah, actually, I actually have – I actually – like because I was just looking at um, just Twitter right now in regards to like a bunch of trade rumors. And I didn't know this, but I guess the Mets are thinking about potentially trading Pete along. Bonzo, and they have like the Cubs, the Mariners, and the Giants as likely destinations. So, so I don't know what your mm-hmm. opinion was of that. If the Mets should keep uh, Pete Alonso, or um, if he's probably it's a little you know, audio you know. cop out there, but I think he saw where oh, he was yeah, going sorry. with that. Yeah, Brian. Well, Taylor. here's yeah. I mean what I what I've heard is that Stearns has already said at the at mm-hmm. the GM meetings might have been this morning or this afternoon. Peter Alonso is not being traded. So that's the end of that discussion. Yeah. Yeah, that would when, be great. Uh, and I, I know social social media is great. Just understand <laughs> yeah. who's writing what and who are they? Are they are they in my garage or your basement and they're writing about trade rumors? Or yeah. is, it a, is it a legitimate media guy? That's that's what you have to pay attention to. But uh, Stearns, had, I, I think he's, he might have said it this afternoon that Alonzo is not going to be traded. Yeah. Well, okay. I, I guess Mike, I also have questions? another quick. Oh, oh, sorry. Brian, go ahead, go ahead yeah. Brian. Oh, Brian, go, 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 go ahead. Go no, ahead. I, I had another quick question because we were talking about um, Carlos Mendoza getting hired and like a lot. You go on social media and like pull a lot of Mets fans and they act <laughs> like they want to join like a suicide cult. They're so upset about <laughs> Carlos Mendoza <laughs> yeah. getting picked up. So I don't know. But like, we but. Phil, we were talking about it. He thinks it's actually a yeah. good decision because um, I'm he being had a, a lot Yankee homer, but. He, he, yeah. He, yeah, even being like, you know, second charge to like Aaron Boone because Aaron Boone got ejected so much. So I guess, do you think that's a good option for the Mets um, to basically pick up Mendoza? Well, Mendoza has been in baseball a long time, has served responsibly in a couple different roles and positions. So the Mets, Mets must have just had some really unique insight that this is the next guy that can kind of carry us. What the Mets need more than a new manager. I, I was not in favor of them blowing buck out. Uh, they need help. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and you know, the reason you had a, a ratty season in New York, whether it was Yankees or Mets, we had a ratty season here because guys underachieved all of them. Mm-hmm. Right. The reason you're, you're mm-hmm. got a scowl on your face is you guys had so many injuries. I mean, yeah. whole bloop and Yankees yeah. pitching staff was on IL with the exception of, of Garrett Cole. Yeah. And then how many, you know, yeah. how many games combined to judge, and Stanton miss. That's a big issue. Right. And for Met fan over there on the left, you know, the reality is you never got out of spring training healthy. World Baseball Classic screwed you, and it just went downhill from that yeah. point on. Uh, so, yeah. I, I mean, mm-hmm. the injuries wrecked those two teams. And return to health is one. And obviously, when the Mets decided 
everybody leaves. When Cohen decided he was going to trade <laughs> Verlander and Scherzer, that, that, yeah, that, that yeah, opened yeah. up the checking account. I mean, he's he's going to be a big time player in some form of free agency. So it, they'll those teams will come back because hey, they got the resources and wherewithal to do it. And last year was just a it was an aberration because of all the injuries. Yeah. All right, yeah. Mike, you got one last one for uh, Lee. We're a little over the time. That's okay. Go ahead. Yeah, okay. uh, right. uh, you, you did answer a lot of my questions uh, in the discussion about Soto and and also speaking of the analytics problems that a lot of teams are having. The only thing I, I would like to bring up in this last minute here is I grew up a Dave Winfield guy, and mm -hmm. I know he went to the Hall of Fame as, he, as a Padre over the Yankees. Um, what has he meant to the organization since his retirement and going to the Hall of Fame as a Padre, and, and how has he been involved in the community in San Diego? He really oh, hasn't, in all honesty. He's, he's really? kind of a... He's out and about. He does a lot of things business-wise. He but he's not doesn't have a presence in San Diego. He doesn't even live here. Really? You know, yeah. And, and, and he was just he was just a superstar athlete. Now that this is way back before I came here, but right. uh, I mean, there's no doubt that he was a phenomenal, accomplished, multi-sport athlete. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I think he got more of his publicity, obviously, when he was in the Big Apple and with some of the other clubs that he was. Yeah. You know, yeah. if, if I close my eyes and you ask me, name an icon in San Diego Padre history, it's Tony Gwynn more than of it course. is anybody else. Oh, yeah. um, if you talk about personality and a guy who's the most unique leader, I close my eyes. And even though he was here for a short window, Ken Caminiti's impact as mm. a leader and a clubhouse guy and a third baseman yeah. was phenomenal, too. He broke down and obviously, sadly, passed away because yep. he had so many demons with substance abuse issues. But those yeah. are really the two marquee guys. Winfield, he's hardly ever here. He's not, I don't think people really view, view him as a Padre anymore. Just like they don't view Steve Garvey as a Padre. And, and Garvey hit the biggest home run in the history of Padre baseball to get him into the first World Series against the yeah. Chicago, you know, by beating the Chicago Cubs. So the homegrown guys who've been here for an extended period of time and have been few and far between are really yeah. the cornerstones of the franchise. And it's not, it's not Manny Machado and it's surely not Juan Soto. And like right. I said, the, the landscape of our game has changed so much that I now I don't know what it's like in the Yankee clubhouse or the Mets clubhouse. It may be the same, but I was really bothered that this thing were a bunch of independent contractors this year and a couple of years ago when they absolutely blew a pennant race and yep. never even made the playoffs. It's to me, it's it's just it's not what baseball should be. And all mm -hmm. I said I said on talk shows I've been on out here, you look at the Philadelphia Phillies in the playoffs. The Phillies and Bryce Harper are everything that the Padres and Manny Machado were not. And, you know, mm -hmm. the players re players retort down out here in San Diego was, hey, look at the back of my baseball card. That came from mm -hmm. Machado. You know, well, yeah, well, the back of your baseball card is you've been the captain of two teams in the last three years that absolutely choked away all their opportunities to go into postseason and make baseball special in October in San Diego. That's what the back of your baseball card shows. So it's too bad because yeah. Manny's a hell of a player, but Manny's mm -hmm. all about Manny. And I kind of fear that Juan is Juan is all about Juan and the statistics and Scott Boros and I mm. just what baseball's become. Yeah. Sad. Yeah. All right. Well Excellent. we and, and you mentioned Bryce Harper and this we're gonna segue this into the uh next thing we're about to do, which is uh he rolled up in a basketball jersey because that should show like love for the city or whatever. I don't remember what the purpose was, which was cool. Right. So we're we are and by the way, Lee, thank you so much for spending thank time you. with us. I mean, I know you've been all around the you know country and you've been on the radio forever. It means so much to me that the dude that I used to listen to on my drive to work was willing to hang out on the webcam and talk baseball for a little bit with us. Um, we're gonna make fun of some NBA jerseys in a few. If you want to hang out for that, Lee, you can. If you got to run, that's totally fine too. Um, it's totally yeah. It's you know, like I said, I'll, I'll give you the option. Um, but yeah, that this has been this has been pretty awesome. Uh, I'm cool. I'm definitely yeah. All right, well, stay, in, stay in touch. I'm around. We'll try to wedge you into the schedule. I just I just came back because I just did my hour and a half Thursday podcast. So if, if you yeah. like if you like sports, check my podcast. It's on YouTube. Like yours, it's good. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's uh, good. Lee Hacksaw Hamilton Sports. You'll like it. Love. You'll check the website. You'll you'll enjoy that too. But good to talk to you. And listen, you know, put it in the book, and maybe good. down the road we can do it again. I, I would lo I would love that so much. But we'll check in on you later in the uh, winter if anything big happens. J Thank you so much. Jets suck. Thank you. Hey, we'll talk to you again, guys. My pleasure. Have a good one, man. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Mike, take it away. Yeah, uh, I want to bring up about uh, Brian Cashman's blow-up 
uh, just the other day to one day ago, two days ago, whenever, whenever it was, uh, or depends on when you're watching this to the yeah. reporters. He, he got into it with, I think Joel Sherman, correct me if I'm wrong, somebody yeah. out there. And I'm sure yeah. somebody will comment. It was a but bunch the, of reporters. It was a bunch of reporters. And look, I don't blame the guy for being defensive. Everybody's ganging up on him. He's been known for having so much success with the Yankees and all of a sudden everybody hates him. But I didn't like the way he handled it. He still continues to blame the past. He blamed injuries. He made excuses. And that's Mm -hmm. in New York. That's just not going to get it done. You know, I mean, if he just came out and said, look, we made deals. They backfired. That's on us. We're going to get this right. We would have shrugged our shoulders and said, okay, well, let's see. Move on. You know, it does not, you know, when you start making excuses, like if you were, if any of us are at our jobs, we start making excuses. The boss is like, get, get rid of this guy. You know, like nobody has time for that. So, you know, he, yeah. he can try to be a tough guy all he wants. <laughs> he'll, he'll be gone long before the Yankees are gone. Just like we'll be gone long before the Yankees are gone unless they move the team somewhere. You know, but my point is, is that, you know, it, you, you know, you can't argue with the fans. This is their team. This is their city. It's representative of the city and they're not winning. And their trades are backfiring. And you could say, oh, the trades backfired, but he's a winner here now and there now. That doesn't matter. They can't have you to know, New York. You need better You need better scouts or something. I co-signed everything you just said, Mike, 100%. Yeah. The thing that stuck out to me about the press conference was the yeah. fact that he said, I think we're pretty fucking good. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. dude, you just presided over the longest yeah. losing streak this team has seen in my lifetime and my dad's lifetime. Yeah. That is a fact, by the way. Okay. That, that you terrible. cannot, after that fucking dumpster fire of a season, say, oh, yeah, we're pretty fucking good. No, dude. No, they, they're not. Like I said, my dad was born, I, don't, I think he was born in the 50s. He was a, he's a 60s, 70s guy. He has never seen a losing streak that bad since he was a child, and I had never seen one. Man. And the fact is, they, they were three or four missed ground balls away from finishing under 500. You do mm-hmm. not get to say that statement. After that season, they've been bad since they got no hit for 17 straight innings last year by yep. the Astros. That's yep. when it fell apart to me. And everybody's saying yep. it's injuries, this and that. To me, it's those two games because the Yankees look like all the wind got, they came, they were mortal. They came down to earth. They're like, I guess we're not that good. That's what it felt like. And everything's mm-hmm. been downhill since. And the last thing I'll say is this what Lee brought up is really telling about getting under the payroll and the analytics. That's what's poisoning the yeah. game. But getting under the payroll, like the Yankees are doing it, they just put the patch on their jersey. The Yankees don't even have their names oh, on the back of their jersey. Stupid. They're such traditionalists. So that. you know they need money. This is a money problem they're dealing with, and he's not allowed to spend. Or yeah. even if he is, he's getting crap. He's getting bargain bin stuff. So uh, all is not well. That, that's the issue, I mean, is that the roster has been oh, – Mike, yeah, yeah, Brian, yeah, you hop in. Yeah, I, go ahead. I, I can fucking talk to him blue in the face. Yeah. Yankee well, I, I didn't right. see this um, rant at all, but I did see the video of Hal Steinbrenner just basically yeah. saying, like, we're terrible. <laughs> like, that I don't guy know what I'm doing. Drink. That, that, that guy did, like, he looked like his wife just left him. He just, the way he had his face in Sansi, he's like, we're terrible. He's like, we're awful. We're awful. And that's, so I, I don't I don't think I even want to see from what you just, I didn't. From what you described, because I heard about it, I don't think I even want to see Brian Cashman, you know, defend the Yankees because seeing Hal Steinbrenner basically on the verge of tears, which just, I oh, think yeah. that's enough. I think that's just says it's hilarious. That. Yeah, look, we no, we're well, in New York, look, we're in New York all the time, so we see people out in the street yelling like lunatics. That was Brian Cashman. So if you've seen if you've seen that, dude, on your it, daily it commute to work, the one, yeah, the one, out. you know what? I'm like, yeah, I want to second that too. Like the one thing I kind of liked about it was it was it was the most New York moment I feel like he's had. Yeah, because dude, Brian, he was legit dropping like f bombs and calling, yeah. like saying the word bullshit, yeah. and like yeah. he was he looked like a dude who like had a couple of shots at a bar and was like screaming at the TV. Like it was very animated because yeah. he's usually very like monotone and boring. It was yeah. kind of fun to watch, but also you're sitting there like, Oh no, he's imploding <laughs> in real time. You Somebody know, it, it was come get your man. <laughs> come get yeah, your boy. I mean, yeah. <laughs> come yeah, get your boy. You know, and, I, and obviously I'm not a Yankees fan. So like anytime yeah. they, anytime they kind of take a nosedive, it's always kind of entertaining um, <laughs> to me, but, I will I also he seemed like after watching the Jeter documentary, he seemed like such a villain, you know, oh, yeah. to me. Like he just like I don't know 
how yeah I I don't know what Yankees fans' feelings are on him. I imagine that it's just like not great, but like yeah. I mean, I didn't. Oh no, they're not great. I, no. I didn't. I didn't come away with a good feeling about Brian Cashman, especially after watching the Jeter documentary. Yeah. That's this, when I was like, Ugh. yeah. Fa- the fans want him fired. They, they literally yeah. fans were organizing hashtag Fire Cashman nights at the stadium, where you'd get like yeah. a few thousand people to show up and chant Fire Cashman during the yeah. game. Like, see, it, it, this, hopefully that answers your question. Sorry, I didn't mean to keep interrupting, but this is what I'll, I'll, well, well, I'll end it with this. We, I'm asked Lee about Dave Winfield. The thing about Dave Winfield and the modern Yankees, and, mm-hmm. and I guess maybe I'm being a bit of a homer because he was my favorite player, but mm-hmm. when he got when he got traded and George Steinbrenner um, hired a private investigator to look into him and that got Steinbrenner suspended, that op- getting George out of the picture and allowing the Yankees to keep their young players is how Gene Michael saved the organization. They kept Jeter. They made the right trades. They brought in a lot of young people. They kept Bernie Williams. So, you know, I was curious for Lee's point of view was on Winfield, but the impact of that situation has so much on the Yankees' future that yeah. my point is keeping the young players was all Gene Michael. Brian Cashman inherited that team in the late 90s, rode the wave of success. I'm not saying he did bad things all the time, mm-hmm. but he's getting a lot of credit for the Yankee dynasty when it belongs to Gene Michael and and the, the people before him uh real, and the real guy fans, in between real fans yeah. know he inherited a good situation but uh you know we don't need to because you you and i could talk shit about brian cashman for an yeah. hour so why don't we uh we'll, 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 we'll clip there, on. get on to the yeah move on to the next thing uh we're gonna close out today with instead instead of a brawl we're gonna do uh we're gonna do some more of the nba jerseys we're gonna mm-hmm. do uh, the, the stupid city connect last time we had the leaked ones now the full list came out we're gonna do a few more now and a few more later mike Let's do it, baby. You yes. control the pictures. So, okay. So we're starting off with the champion Denver Nuggets, and what the apparently fuck they, is this? This is uh, Joke. It's this terrible. is. This is the, it's terrible. This is the combination of Joke Jokic's uh, locker door. You know, it's it, 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 no, they don't have that door. Just, but, yeah. I almost feel it just hits a slide. Like I, this isn't even enough for. for what what is this? this well, well, what does this the five two? Is that the elevation? Is that supposed to be what that is? The five two eight zero? That is the number of times that Jokic rides a horse uh, all season between He's, games. This is what that is. That's the number. Yeah, I, I don't know what, what that is. I should have looked it, it up, but it, I had a migraine. The elevation of Denver. Uh, I'm gonna look it up right now. I'll look it up I right think now. It's the while, elevation. While you guys cracking wise on this stupid ass. It does have I the mean, traditional he, mountain range, like their jerseys have always had, but it's. But you can't even see. You can't see it. You can't see no. it at all. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just know. googled it. Denver elevation. If you can see that, yeah. five two eight up. So yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a jersey that displays the elevation. That is so dumb. You don't, I'm sorry. You can't, it's dumb. You, you can't even. You can't even see it. You like no. You, there's mountains if you look close, but you can't even mm-hmm. see it because it's like no. oh, like wow, like. You know, I'm, no... I'm definitely, I'm definitely not like a fashion gay, but like, you don't have to be a fucking, no, yeah. <laughs> you don't have to be a fashion gay to be like, wow, that was a terrible fucking color scheme at all. There's, you know? there's like, no team logo. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's fun. It's <laughs> That's why it took me a minute to figure it out. Um, oh, no. this is so bad. Not it, a fan. Oh, oh, I mean, one a one-time thing for like Arbor Day or something, you know, because it's elevation, it's earth. No, maybe. no, no, no. What Denver needs to have for their <laughs> uniforms, and I've been, I was in Denver this past summer. Um, uh-huh. I was just gonna say that it should be green uniforms with just a big old pot leaf right on the front. <laughs> they're, I mean, they're, they're called. They're called the Nuggets. They're called the, the Nuggets. How, yeah. are, how? How? They're called the Nuggets in a city that is like probably the highest city. It's amazing. mentally the highest city in the whole We're, entire country. Yeah. How is it? I mean, I know it I would know. obviously be controversial, but like, how has it, there not been that at least a little wink, wink, nudge, nudge mascot of like, just like, I don't know, just like, uh, just an actual weed. Or just a tum- or just a tumbleweed with like sunglasses who look like you're just listening to Bob Marley, like or something, yeah. something like that. It's yeah, yeah, a- like, like like for promo nights, they give out like fake dreads to fans to wear, like the like the hats that are, uh, and yeah. then you yeah. give out a, a complimentary joint to all. They look I mean, like, like George, George Carl. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like it should. <laughs> not George Carl. That 
Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be exactly on the nose with like a pot leaf, although that would be yeah. that'd, that'd be, be amazing, well, or like, Brian the nugs. If there was just like it was just like a picture of like a jar <laughs> right, that was like uh, tilted yeah. over, and there were like the nugs, actual nugs yeah. spilled out. That would be my, like why why not? Or just like yeah, some something to allude like yeah, we know like basically this was the first state that legalized marijuana in the history uh-huh. of the nation. That this that is, is a fact. Colorado is yeah. the first state to do that. Yeah. So like I don't know, and they're called the Nuggets. Like it's yeah. it's almost two on it's the right nose. There. It's like, yeah. So uh, yeah, I don't know. This makes me want to light my computer on fire. This jersey right now. It's, this might be the worst one we've seen yet. Moving along, yeah. Mike. What do we got next? Moving along. Yeah. All right, this one's pretty cool. This is um, yeah. Houston Rockets. It's H Town, and if you look closely in the lower corner, it's signed by Hakeem Olajuwon and Clyde Drexler, which. They obviously won the championship together with the Rockets over the Knicks, but they actually won together with Houston, the college team. And I think this is a little reminiscent of the college uniform. I like anything old school with the old school script. I like the the color scheme. It is a little simple, like an old Clippers jersey, but I I like it. I think it's kind of cool. Yeah, I, I like mean, this. It's, yeah, it's it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not like amazing, mm-hmm. but it's also not bad either. It's like so, just a standard yeah. kind of like jersey, like you know. I would definitely, I, I would probably wear it if I was, uh, you know, Houston fan. So yeah, yeah. I, you know, so pre- yeah. pretty. It's got the, almost like s- almost like baseball font, but not quite. It's very simple. It keeps the normal team colors. It mm-hmm. doesn't really go that far outside it, the beaten path. I like it a lot, actually. This it is definitely cool does have baseball font. It does yeah. look like it, it has, has baseball like, font. Yeah, timey. Fucking baseball yeah, right it's cool. There. I actually really, really like this. Um, yeah, yeah, it's cool. It, I dig if it. you look, if you look up Hakeem Olajuwon's college jersey, I'm looking at it now on eBay. It's more traditional NBA block lettering, but it's the same colors: white, red lining, and little blue piping. So yeah, it's 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 it's, it's pretty cool, you know. So uh, let's move to the next one. This is obviously Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. This was designed by aliens. <laughs> I don't know what the color is kind of cool. It's such, it's like a too much lettering here. I, I don't know. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, because what I was the thing? most people watch basketball on TV, even on a big screen. I don't know if you're going to be able to make out that script lettering, right? Yeah, and there's these dots and these lines in the letter. It's hard to see here. What does I that don't mean? Know. Is that like a Philadelphia thing? Is that like a are those supposed to be like anklets for prisoners because so many people uh, in Philly are on parole? Like I don't understand. Is that like what the... it is? I don't. I don't. You just know. have Meek I... Mill in a jumpsuit. That should just be it's... the ma- <laughs> that should be the mascot. <laughs> <laughs> Meek Mill. That would actually be. Yeah. That would be a great mascot. Meek Mill. <laughs> Meek Mill. <laughs> just yeah. uh, you know. The Will Smith um, yeah. Put the Will Smith slap on a jersey. That, yeah. That's said, I don't hate it. I mean, it's it's fine. Yeah, I don't hate it. The color, I like the color. I, there's something here. It's just I think because it's a city of blood, brotherly love and it's so crammed in. I yeah, know. I think I think you're right, Mike. If the letters were a little bit bigger, even if you kept the script, if you made like it, like if let's say mm-hmm. this font was 12 point, if we could just get this font up to like 18 or 20 point font, you know, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. I think you're right, Mike. That's a good point. I I don't know. Jerseys are supposed to be big so the fans can yeah. see them that's the whole point so and i also but, these guys are tall as fuck so like you you got a lot of real estate on the chester back of these players yeah, to, to right vertical stuff, so. yeah. yeah yeah everything's you just, see, you just see brotherly that's all you yeah. see you just see brotherly and you're like what what is going what's going on there that's like yeah, in the world but, baseball classic great britain it's a great britain and just plain uh, block letters yeah. and the brotherly has that same kind of simple everybody's moving to this minimalism crap it would yeah it, it sucks. It says um, brotherly. It'd be and, very and, and, funny uh, if they. I'm uh, oh, sorry, Brian. What? Well, yeah. no, and all, and also to just like the city of brotherly love, like the most like violent, <laughs> degenerate city <laughs> with the most violent, degenerate fans do as well. They need to have if they actually don't even have Meek Mill that have um them basically a, a mascot of the guy who ate horse shit when the Eagles won the Super Bowl. That's yeah. Yeah. that would definitely perfectly encapsulate this this throwing batter snowballs at Santa Claus. Yeah. Yeah. I, I also up. think uh because it says brotherly, are they gonna let the the white players wear this jersey? Is that, yeah, uh, no? I think they okay. will. Okay. Yeah. I, Awkward. <laughs> I work with some I work right with there. some people. <laughs> Wait, what? I don't know no, I was gonna say I work with people from Philly and they're all bl- the the nice okay, people. you know what? We got to get break out the cancel yeah. stamp for that one again. Okay, yeah. but uh, anyway, anyway, let's get to the next one. All uh, right, next one. 
The Lakers. Okay, so this echoes something from the 1950s. This is actually the best one I feel like. So yeah, far. I don't like the black. I, I, I feel it was like yellow. The, is it supposed to be like an arrowhead shape? I don't really get what the the like the the triangle like the. I don't. It it's, reminds me of like something from the 1950s, six something really oh. old school. I right, just heard a dog. Oh, is that's that Benji? My, that's Benji. He's I, barking. I, if it maybe if it was purple and yellow, the black it throws me per- off because. It looks. Per- I mean, this yeah. it, it, again. It's not. It's it's well, whatever. Not awful, but like, it's cool. yeah. I I think it. Again, like it's like yeah. You obviously see the yellow and purple and black. It it's not bad, honestly. It's not terrible. Like you and also too, I kind of do like how it like does like form an arrow a little bit. I'm like okay. I guess oh. It's kind of hard to read, but I, I don't hate it. So if you go to, uh, and this is the guy I always follow for league jerseys, is Chris Creamer, uh, sportslogo.net. So he's got a graphic here of uh, somebody from 1962, and they're wearing a T-shirt, and it says Los Angeles Lakers spelled out the exact same way. And then in 2002, LeBron is wearing a warm-up shirt that's yellow with light blue. They're old Minneapolis Lakers, and it's, it's spelled Lakers. So this Lakers font is very traditional um so go so for the full thing yeah go to sportslogos.net he's got a story on all these but it's from an existing thing the lakers had so i, I like the cut they kept the team colors i think it's cool overall it's fine yeah. You know. yeah all right what do we got how many we got left mike um well i had okay we'll save that one for next time we, we're missing one but that's okay so here i save this for last this is the all next right. I like it, but I will admit it's pretty lazy. <laughs> it's just not, I, it I looks, actually I like it. Yeah. It's by Kith. The Knicks have a partnership with that fashion brand Kith. Kith is one of those companies that makes very minimalism fashion or they take an existing thing and they just put their name on it and now it's worth 10 times the amount, which pisses me off to no end. But <laughs> yeah. it's good. I like when they bring back the NYC um nike logo because that's been around i used to have air force ones with that logo on it so that's a new york tradition for basketball um i didn't know they were incorporating the black on the sides which is more the late 90s knicks the one i saw i thought it didn't have that and i thought it looked better but um i'm still waiting for them for them to let clyde to design a jersey so go ahead let me ask you mike is this Mm -hmm. the last jersey that we have yeah for now yes yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, one of them didn't come. Well, over, yeah. I now I have to say this is definitely the best one out of all. Yeah. Of them because and here and oh, here's this why. episode, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And and here and here's why because a they just stuck with their classic colors. See, they didn't try to you know they didn't they didn't yeah. try to reinvent the wheel. They're just like okay, blue and orange. That's what the, that's just the Knicks, blue and orange. Yeah. So they didn't try they didn't try to do you know they didn't try to do like magenta with black or right. something like that like n- n- nothing yeah. ridiculous so, like they didn't do like they, the nets did with all the colors yeah oh, yeah yeah, uh, yeah. But, i mean you know the nets jerseys are great but it, <laughs> also too i kind of like the faded letters too, that they have too like the faded like new york where it looks like it's kind of like in a reflection of itself yeah so that's i mean cool. like if we're gonna if we're gonna rate them this is probably the best one simply for you know they're adding like a new ish design but it's also just it's sticking stick to simplicity with all of this yeah. don't deviate from your original colors like sit, yeah like, very clean just, yeah. yeah they're very clean even if you were to wear this five years from now it won't really look out of date you know yeah like, like people say, oh, remember when they wore those? No, it it'll this can this has a good shelf life. I think I like the pinstripes. Um, yeah, I give it give it like an A minus, B plus, A minus. It's up there. Uh, yeah. Oh, I didn't know we were doing letter grades, but yeah, no, oh, I, I just, just whatever. Yeah, yeah, everything no, you guys good. said, I agree with for the most part. I just I think it's cool. Um, I mean, it's it's actually what you just mentioned a second ago. If you told me, well, it's kind of like what I said about the the uh, New York Rangers alt jersey. If mm-hmm. you would have told me that this was an alt jersey for the last three years, and I just happened to miss all the games, I would have totally believed you. Yeah, you know? it, it, it it's right in line with the you know traditional look of the team. 
but it's still something a little different. And that, that's kind of the ones that I like when we do these City Connect or City, whatever they're called, uniforms. City, is yeah, it, city Edition, city, whatever. Yeah, City Edition. Yeah. It is the, I like the ones that they keep the team colors and the tradition, but like, you know, they mix it up a little bit. And this is a yeah. perfect example of that. I think it's great. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, that was the last one. Um, we're going to do these throughout the season. Um, and that's it. The only thing I wanted to throw out there was uh, we don't have a brawl today, but we do have one that we taped in the former version of our show coming that's out right, the studio Saturday. Version. Yeah, so that we have David Cohn against Pedro Guerrero. So watch that fight. It's a great episode. Um, YouTube hates it because there's four letter words in it. But otherwise, it's it's one of our better fights. And then uh, I don't know. I was going to say something else, and now I don't remember. So oh right. oh, and keep keep commenting and yelling at us and making fun of us and saying yeah yeah stupid. yeah no yeah tell us how much we suck. We, we love yeah, it. We it's love great. It. Yeah, we say stupid stuff <laughs> all the time. People take us too seriously, but go ahead, tell us we're assholes. We love it. We'll get in. We'll get into it with you anytime. All right, there we go. Peace. Awesome. That's it.